We are in our second to the last installment of our series, Walk the Talk. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, Walk the Talk. Okay, we're hoping, we've been camping sa isang ano lang, libro lang. In fact, isang chapter lang, Psalm 119. And we are been camping on this uh, in this chapter for quite some time already. This is our fifth week, last week na po, next week. At uh, panalangin ko po, marami po kayong natutunan so far. Marami ba kayong natutunan? Salamat sa medyo kokonte Sa taas ba, marami ba kayong natutunan? <laughs> I hope marami kayong natutunan. No? Anyway, um, we're hoping na as we've learned this, hindi lang tayo puro salita, kundi pati sa, pati sa ating gawa. Kaya nga siya, walk the talk, it will be evidence in how we live our lives. So today's topic will be about remember the word. I would like to invite everyone to please stand up as we read God's word together. Masahin po natin ito. It is in uh, this section of Psalm 119, 153 to 160. One, two, three, go. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life. According to your rules, many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. Some of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. God, I pray that you would revive us today. The determination to remember your word, to think and obey your word. Holy Spirit, enlighten your people as I preach your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen at amen. Please take your seat. All right. Medyo maliwanag yung spotlight. Feeling ko ako ay magkoconcert. Pero wag niyo nang isipin yon. Hindi pa ako magkoconcert. Magpipreach po tayo ng word ni Lord and I hope the word of God would pierce our very soul today. May tanong ako sa atin. Okay, as I was preparing this preaching, ito yung naisip ko nung itanong sa atin. Okay? Ito yung tanong. Ano ang isang aral na itinuro sa'yo ng magulang mo noon? Okay? Pero binaliwala mo lang, no? Pero mas tumatak na siya sa'yo ngayon. Meron ba? Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna call you na lang, pero just think of that. May naisip ako yung sinasabi ng magulang na mag-toothbrush ka araw-araw, wag puro sweets. May ganun ba? Tapos nung tumingin ka sa ipin mo ngayon, o nga. <laughs> Di ba? Tumatak lalo. Kasi may false teeth na and all, you know? Uh, ala ng ipin, ang hirap ng uh, ngumuya ng ano, karne. <laughs> or maybe don't read in dark places and somehow it has affected uh, your eyesight. Today, uh, yung, how about yung ano, matulog sa tanghali? Sino ito? Gustong-gusto nyo yun? <laughs> hate na hate mo yun, di ba? Matulog sa tanghali. Tapos may kasama pa yung pamalo, di ba? Katabi mo si nanay. Ang hirap nun. Hanggang sa na- naalala mo sana, natulog ko na maaga, tatangkad pala sana ako ngayon. <laughs> Magpursige sa pag-aaral, mag-ipon. Piliin mo barkada mo, wag mag-bisyo and many more, right? Mas tumatak siya sa'yo ngayon kasi somehow you found the value of that now. Dati parang baliwala lang siya. Uh, though not all of the lessons we've learned from our parents are truthful, but nevertheless, some of those are precious lessons. Tama po ba? And we appreciate them for, it, for, for that. Kung katabi mo yung bagulang mo, sabi mo sa kanya, I appreciate you, mom. I appreciate you, dad. Okay. Last week, natutunan natin, no, as we've, uh, uh, about the Word of God, we've learned that uh, we're, we're talking about the reasonable cost of choosing God's word, na, na, natutunan natin na ang salita ng Diyos ay totoo, di ba? Totoo, tuwid o tama, at saka tatagal ang salita ng Diyos. Somehow, that section of Psalm last week, the psalmist repeats it again in Psalm 160 in his conclusion. Sabi niya dito, The sum of your word is truth, totoo. And every one of your righteous rules, tama, tuwid, endures forever. Tatagal ang salita ng Diyos. Di ba? Parang, totoo, tuwid, tama, tatagal ang salita ng Diyos. Wow! Reasonable cause. 
Pero not just because it's a reasonable cost, na totoo siya, tama siya, at saka tatagal, means na tatatag agad sa utak natin, right? Kagaya nga ng tinanong ko sa atin, di ba? Hindi siya tumatatag agad. <laughs> Kasi nga, marami tayong mga tinitingnan, parang marami tayong mas valuable sa atin ngayon, na somehow, later, na-realize mo lang, oo nga, tama. Tama pala yung word ni God, okay? Somehow, ganun po yung ano, ah, uh, na experience natin sa salita ng Diyos, somehow hindi natin siya pinapahalaga na parang hindi siya tumatatak sa mind natin. Pag tinanong ko kayo, may naalala ba kayo last week sa preaching? Parang, kurk-kurk-kurk, di ba? Or meron ba kayong naalala sa, ano, sa word ni God as you were reading this, this past weekdays up to yesterday? Meron ba? Kurk-kurk, ganoon din. Konti pa rin. <laughs> okay. Uh, hindi lang yon, Hindi lang siya agad-agad tumatatak. Meron pang mga tao na tumututol sa salita ng Diyos. Ang tawag ko dito, kontrabida sa salita ng Diyos. Meron mga kontrabida sa salita ng Diyos? Meron. Okay, yung iba, hindi nila sinasadya kasi they don't know God, pero yung iba naman, sinasadya. Alam mo, yung section of this psalm talks about that. May mga kontrabida sa salita ng Diyos. The psalmist named them as wicked, persecutors, his adversaries, and the faithless people. Ito yung mga taong walang pakialam sa word ni God. They don't even keep or seek God's word. Wala sa pakialam. In fact, what they would do pag Kristiyano ka, they would harass you. They would trouble you. They would persecute you. They would betray you. Ito yung mga taong tinatawag nating tormentors. Yung mga nanggugulo, yung mga uh, niluloko ka kasi Kristiyano ka, kasi you believe in God's word. Meron mang ganun na na-experience kayo? I hope wala siya dito. Anyway, meron namang, uh, yung iba, troublers. Talagang pinagtatawanan ka, iniisahan ka, sinisingle out ka kasi Christian ka. O yung iba naman, traitor. Yun yung faithless. Ibig sabihin ng faithless, traitors. Okay? Uh, pinipersonal ka kasi Christiano ka, di ba? And sometimes when these people come into our lives, di ba? And they inflict suffering upon us. Di ba? Nakakainis, nakakagalit. And pag, pag, nang, pag nangyari yun, minsan nakakalimutan natin yung word ni God. Tama ba? Minsan na-overwhelm tayo ng emotions natin. Tama ba? Pag na-overwhelm tayo ng emotions natin, na-disorient tayo and we forget God's word, anong reaction natin? Kung sa business, napapakompromise ka kasi iniipit ka. Right? May, alam niyo, kristyano ka, hanapan ka ng butas para ipitin ka. So napapakompromise ka ngayon. Or maybe, mayroong mga sadyang balasubas na tao, right? Uh, ikaw naman, na, na, natitem ka to na magsalita ng masama. Or yung iba, in just a knee-jerk reaction, napamura ka sa galit. I'm sure wala ditong tao niyan. But we do experience this, right? Iba naman, natulak kang gumawa ng mali sa school kasi may bully. Di ba? Pinipressure ka. Or maybe nga, na, na-abuse ka dati. Now your tendency is to Please, the people around you. Nakasakit ka, oh, nakasakit ka kasi sinaktan ka, revenge, right? Put you, you take justice in your own hands. You know, those are the infliction that these people can do to us. Sa jabang Lord, nilikha ba to, mo ba tong tao na to para kontrahin lang talaga ako kasi naniniwala ako sa'yo, sa salita mo, di ba? And it's tough, it's hard that we tend to forget and swerve from God's word. We forget His word. We swerve from God's word. But nevertheless, yung binasa natin, the psalmist experienced such suffering sa mga taong ganun. Pero sabi niya, I do not forget your word. I do not swerve from your word. Grabe, paano niya nagawa yun? Di ba? Sa mga panahong na nainis ka na, nagagalit ka na, ano yung ginawa ng psalmist na to? At makikita natin sa uh, paulit-ulit niyang sinasabi, no? Uh, it is uh, three times niyang sinabi dito sa section na to, wherein we, it will give us a hint in how the psalmist responded. Sabi niya, give me life, you notice it? Give me life according. He's talking about revive me, give me life. According, in agreement. Sinabi ni Pastor David kanina yan sa 1 John chapter 5, according to God's will. So when we talk about according to God's will, it has always it needs to be an agreement to God's word, right? So pag tinan mo yan and you've seen the context of Psalm 119 implicitly, what he's saying is this: God's word gives life, 
remember them. It's always in agreement with the Word of God. God's Word does not just guide us towards life. May mga pangangaral yung mga magulang natin na ginag-guide lang tayo sa buhay. Pero iba yung nagbibigay buhay. Nandito po ba tayo? Ang salita ng Diyos ay nagbibigay buhay sa atin. Feeling mo patay ka na ngayon? Inside, kaya kang buhay ni God with His Word. Not just with positive thinking, but the mere Word of God. Bakit? Bakit natin kailangan alalahanin yung Word ni God? Well, ang dami naman talagang reason, but let me just name to you some. In Proverbs, here is wisdom talking here. Sabi ng wisdom, sabi niya, For whoever finds me, the Word of God, wisdom, finds, ano daw? Life. And obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me, ano daw, anong result? Endures himself and all who, yung mga kontrabida sa salita ng Diyos, ano daw ang result? Death. So imagine, sinasak, sasaktan mo yung sarili mo at kamatayan yung nag-aantay sa'yo. If you don't value God's word. That's a warning, right? Not to scare us, but to give us what's about to happen. Na masasaktan natin yung sarili natin and there's death awaiting us. Ang dami niyan sa Proverbs. Okay? At hindi lang po yun, may pangatlo pa. Ito sa Proverbs 10.17. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects the word of God or reproof leads others. So, injuring oneself, death, or even leading others astray. Think about that. If we fail to remember and value God's Word sa buhay natin, it's just a matter of time na masasaktan natin yung sarili natin, yung ibang tao. Death would happen to us. Not just physical death, but spiritual death. And then we can lead others astray. See, Apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy who was also, also experiencing suffering. At ito yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul kay Timothy because Timothy was being persecuted at sinabi ni Apostle Paul sa kanya. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 to 17, In fact, everyone who wants to live godly life as a Christian in Christ Jesus will be persecuted while evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, Continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those are from what you have learned it. And how from infancy you have known the, of course, that's the Word of God, Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God breathe. Ang salita ng Diyos, binugahan, ganyan lang word, you know, ng buhay, yung Word ni God. Kaya every time we read God's Word and we remember God's Word, may buhay dun. Kasi God breathed upon His Word. So that every time we read God's Word, Uy, bakit ako na-encourage? Uy, bakit nagkaroon ako ng ano, hope sa buhay ko? Ba't nagkaroon ako ng wisdom? But hindi lang yun. Hindi lang wisdom, sabi niya dito, so that it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, wisdom and Good work, hindi lang talk, 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 wise, but also walk, walk, walk. Walk the talk. Are you all here? Yung salita ng Diyos. Kahit nagsasuffer, yes. Yan ngayon sinasabi ni, ano, ni, ni Paul kay Timothy. So imagine the good works that we can do if we chose to remember God's Word. If we train our brain to remember the Word of God. Of course, may mga feelings tayo, may mga emotions tayo, di ba? Birds fly nga, sabi nila, fish swim, humans feel. Valid yun. But I believe that Christians can walk the talk when our emotions are submitted to God's Word. When our emotions are submitted to God's Word. In fact, pag binasa mo yung buong Psalm 119, magugulat ka. It is the Word of God that dictates the feelings of the psalmist. Hindi pa baliktad. May feelings ako na parang ito ang didictate ko sa word ni God. Hindi. Yung word ni God yung nagdidictate ng feelings niya. Na napapamahal siya sa word ni God na he would long for the word. Grabe yung nangyayari sa psalmist na ito. 
Imagine that. If that would change us from the inside out, we walk the talk. Christian parents and Christian children becoming bridges of reconciliation. There's, a, there's integrity at workplace and also at home. Government leaders, citizens contributing to the welfare of the city and many more. So, as we look at how the psalmist responds, in times of suffering and opposition, tayo po mga Christiano, we walk the talk. When we remember, okay, ito na, God's commands give life. God's command gives life. Sabi dito sa 153 to 154, sabi niya, Lord, tinan mo yung nangyayari sa akin. Tinan mo yung suffering ko. Deliver me. He was asking for salvation. For deliverance, Lord, tingnan mo, nakikita mo ba to Lord? Plead my cause. And then sabi niya, biglang kumambyo siya. Ano yung, ano yung appeal niya? Give me life. According to your promise. Hindi lang po yung promise na pangako. Alam po na pangakuan na kayo at hindi natupad yun. Di ba? Nasaktan tayo. Di ba? May kasabihan kami sa mga basketball teammates ko para hindi, hindi kami masyadong masakta at pinangakuan kami na pinangakuan ka na nga. Gusto mo pang tuparin? Aba, abuso na yan. Di ba? Parang, I mean, just to protect ourselves from hurt. Di ba? I know we've experienced the hurt of broken promise, but this is not just about the promises. May kakibat na command po ito. And when God would always, makikita mo sa Old Testament, covenant, may command, tapos may pangako si God. Um, that was the appeal of the psalmist. And he probably knew because God, in, in Deuteronomy, ito yung, ito yung binabasa nila palagi, ito yung kinuman ni God sa Israel. They were about to enter the promised land, sabi ni God sa kanila, these are the commands, decrees and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. You, your children, and your grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all these decrees and commands, ano daw? You'll enjoy long life. Wow. It's a command from God for them. The psalmist knows this. You see, God's command gives life to Moses over a hard-hearted Pharaoh. Ang tigas ng puso ni Pharaoh against them. But God's command and promise gives life to Moses. Okay? God's command gives life to Elijah over this wicked Jezebel who's about to kill him. God's command was with, gives life to Hezekiah over this arrogant king, Sinakerib, wanting to attack and conquer the city. Imagine that. You may be like the rejected Moses right now. Kasi may nag-reject kay Moses. Sino, sino ka that you want to rule over us? Or you may be like the exhausted Elijah. Ngayon. Napagod na pagod ka na sa buhay. Di ba? Or you may be like the shaken Hezekiah. But let me tell you this. Just like what the psalmist was determined to do. Train your brain to remember the Word of God. As you are feeling these fears and threats and frustration and exhaustion, and somehow from these feelings, it would process to the brain, right? Ano bang, paano ba pinaprocess ng brain nun? I hope that the filter is the Word of God. That's the reason why the psalmist was able to respond, Right? Because the filter is God's word. I remember your word, Lord. Give me life according to your commands, according to your promise. In fact, ito yung picture ng word ni God sa atin. Think about this. The law of the Lord, Psalm 19, is perfect, reviving the soul. It revives us. If you are exhausted, shaken, if you feel rejection, when we filter it with the Word of God, it revives. Bumubuhay yan sa atin. Yung pagod natin. Kaya importante yung thinking natin is always about the Word of God to try to filter it. Ano ba yung Word mo, God? The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Think about that. 
it would enlighten us. Ah, ito pala yung dapat gawin. Ito pala yung dapat discarded dyan. Now see, that was the appeal of the psalmist. God's command gives life. He remembered it. But not just that. He also remembered that God's judgment or God's rules give life. Meaning, second one, God's verdict gives life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your rules. Contrary sa sinabi niya kanina, Lord, I need salvation. Deliver me. Ito naman sa mga ano, wicked. Lord, wala silang salvation. Why? Because they do not remember your words. They forgot. They forget your words. Di ba? Now, give me life according to your justice. According to your verdict. And who among you would agree? Because God is a righteous judge. Every time He would judge, it's always right. Di ba? Pero alam naman natin, yung mundong ginagalawan natin, they're trying to bend the laws of God. They may escape for a while, temporarily, but at the end of the day, towards eternal judgment, we know anong kahinat na, kahinat na, oh, sorry sa Tagalog, kahinat na noon. Right? Eternal judgment. With the wicked being guilt, guilty and the one who's with God being saved. Think about the salvation that God is giving to us through His judgment. Maybe may pinagdaan ka ngayon and the justice is far from you. It's time to remember God's Word. Amen? It's time to think about the Word of God. Paano naman if we make a mistake, if we are unfaithful? Alam nyo, God will judge us. May ju- may, God will judge us. He will discipline us. Pero alam nyo, just like he, how He judged Israel, meron pa rin siyang kakibat na hope <laughs> at saka buhay. Yung katigasan ng bansang Israel na may warning na si Isaiah, may warning na si Jeremiah na ito na yung mangyayari, nat- natupad na. Okay? In fact, kay King Zedekiah, nangyayari na they were about to be conquered. Okay? Nagkaroon tayo ng series ito early this year ni King Nebuchadnezzar sa Babylon. Papunta na at umaatake na yung ano, uh, Babylon, yung Chaldeans towards this city of Judah. Okay? Tapos takot na takot na yung si Zedekiah because they will be judged. But you know what? May grace pa rin si God sa kanila. Ito yung sinabi ni Jeremiah kay, ano, kay King Zedekiah. Oh. Sabi niya dito, Jeremiah 38, 17 to 20. Then Jeremiah said to King Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If you will surrender, magsusurrender ka to the officials of the king of Babylon, then your life will be spared, the city will not be burned with fire, and you and your house shall live. Minigyan siya ng chance ni God. Ha? Surrender? Mumukha akong talunan yan sa mga uh, uh, sinasakupan ko. Parang I feel defeated. Pero sabi niya, surrender ka. Mabubuhay ka. Your life will be spared. Itong city, hindi ma- masusunog. Yan ang sa- sagot sa kanya. Eh, natatakot ako eh. Pag nag-surrender ako, baka itong gawin nila sa akin. Ito ulit sinabi ni, ano, ni Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, You shall not be given to them. Obey now the voice of the Lord in what I say to you, and it shall be well with you, and your life shall be spared. Did he obey God? He did not. He failed to obey God. His children, whole children, was slaughtered. Kinatay sa harap niya. Uh, pagkatapos katayan yung mga anak niya, tinanggalan siya ng, ng dalawang mata niya. That would be the last image that he would see. Wow. There was a warning from God, but he did not he did. He did not obey God's word. Maybe, nandyan, nandito ka na ngayon sa consequences ng kasalanan mo. And you felt, Lord, may pag-asa ba? May pag-asa. In fact, the, that's the fact that you're attending here, God is giving you hope, a chance. If you make the decision to remember His word, to choose His word, and say, God, may pag-asa sa'yo. Meron. Baka nga, kinukote mo na yung Jeremiah 29, ano, di ba? 11 eh, di ba? For I know the plans, I have for you plans to prosper you. Al- alam niyo naman context nun, di ba? 70 years, mag judge pa sila. Maghihirap pa silang 70 years, saka mangyari yung plano prosperity. Nakakalimutan natin yung verse 12 and 13. Yun yung mas importante ngayon. 
Verse 12 and 13 says here, Then you will call upon me, come and pray to me, you will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. The judgment of God gives life. If you heed it, if we seek God, if we pray to God, if we humble ourselves, say, Lord, patawarin mo ako, God. Yung discarte po, Lord, yung masusun, hindi sa akin, God. Mali yung discarte ko. If we humble ourselves. Church, are you here? If we remember God's word, God's vic- verdict will give you life. Karabi ka gracious to God. But it's not just that. God's command give us life. God's verdict give us life. But lastly, God's steadfast love gives us life. Sabi niya dito, Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless or the traitors with disgust because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. Life according to the steadfast love of God. And that's something that comforts us. Not just the judgment of God, but it may kasama kasing pagmamahal eh. <laughs> yun yun eh, di ba? Yung judgment ni God, righteous, pero mahal na mahal tayo ni God eh. Mahal na mahal ka ng Diyos. Na hindi ka mag-suffer sa mga bagay na uh, nandito sa mundo because we have not chosen to follow His Word. He wants us to follow His Word. And His steadfast love will all the more give us life if we choose it. When the nation of Israel already experienced being into exile, nandun na sila. Yung consequence ng pinaggagawa nila, katigasan ng ulo nila. Kailangan na lang encouragement. Isaiah was a prophet. Was, God was used to give the word to them. Isaiah 50, 55 verse 3 says, Incline your ear. Come to me. Here, pakinggan mo. That your soul may live. And I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Yung pagbamahal ng Diyos kay David, it went beyond just his generation, up to the nation of Israel. My steadfast love. Makinig ka, bansang Israel. Prostrated ka, hopeless ka, makinig ka so that your soul may live. And we know the steadfast love of God comes in the name of Jesus Christ, more than David, that it impacts not just one nation, but all nations. Because of His love for us. Pre-pandemic, pandemic, post-pandemic, inflation. And the question is, are we listening to His voice? To His word? And every time we do communion here, we are remembering God. That is the posture of that. In remembrance of me. Yung word na in remembrance of me. The element of the bread and the cup. Kaya nga sinasabi naman, you may drink the cup. Parang literally sinasabi mo, paano ko mainom yung cup? Di ba? Di ba juice dapat? Well, it's about these two elements. The bread, his body is broken, but the cup speaks about God's wrath for our sin. And when we remember the love of Jesus for us, He is the one who stayed with God's command at the cross. He is the one who chose to love at the verdict that's supposed to be you and me. He is the one who gives us life. And He chose even to forgive those who are hurting Him. Father, forgive them. This God is the God who can help us respond right in times of suffering. When somebody harasses us, betrays us, when somebody hurts us, we remember not just the Word of God, we remember Jesus. We remember Him sa buhay natin. For 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, And He died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him. That's the result of the love of God for us. His commands give us life. The judgment of God, the verdict of God gives us life. The love of God gives us life. As we face sufferings, train the brain to remember the Word of God. Train the brain to remember Jesus. Let it be the filter upon our emotions as we submit 
ourselves to God in suffering. Train the brain to remember God's Word brings life. Don't live for yourself. Don't live for ourselves. That's the result of Jesus Christ dying for us so that we would no longer live for ourselves. Can we all stand up right now? I have a call for us today. A call to return to God and a call to live for Him. It's both. Returning to God and living for Him. As we chose to remember God's Word, and you know you are in this situation that suffering, painful, affliction, may mga uh, nanggugulo, nananakit, pinag-persecute sa atin, natitempt tayo ng bubawi, di ba? Kung alam mo lang, I want to give you a piece of my mind. <laughs> Napakadaling gawin nun eh. Vengeance. But now, as we remember Jesus, I remember His Word, ito pala nagbibigay ng buhay sa akin. Lord, yung vengeance pala, Lord, belongs to you. Yung justice pala, Lord, belongs to you. Help me, God, not to take justice in my own hands. I want to give this call for us. A call to return to God and a call to live for Him. If that's you, raise up your hands and say, God, I'm returning to you, Lord. I've been living for myself, for my own dreams, for my own wants, for my own desires. I want to live for you. You see the hearts of your people, God. Here we are, Lord, as we choose to remember you, Jesus, and your word. God, we acknowledge our limitations. We acknowledge, God, our failings. But let your word, God, just like what the psalmist says, give us life. Church, be revived. The word of God, bring life upon your situation, upon you. Hear God's word, humble yourself, seek God, remember His word, and walk the talk. And allow the word of God to transform you from the inside out. From the inside out.